I'm just gonna lean in. <laughs> Lean into it. That's like that's like life. Just lean into it. You know, kind of whatever's happening. Just lean into it. Just so everyone's aware, Matt Steele broke his chair in the move, <laughs> so now he's in the weird tall chair and leaning downwards to speak into the mic. So you know what? It's 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 a more casual look for me. Like I'm I'm not sitting upright. I'm sort of just leaning. It like doesn't. My my uh, chin is in my hand. Mm, it I doesn't read as casual. It's very casual. I'm going to have back problems after this, but it's fine. <laughs> I mean, you lived a good life. Also, I was looking for those pink scissors. Oh, yeah. I had, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to unpack, too. I can't. just. There's pink scissors on his desk. Yes, but you have scissors. So. I know, but I was just like looking for them. And I was like, oh, no, I hope they didn't get lost in the move. No, and I'm happy that they didn't get lost in the move. They, they didn't. There were pink scissors for breast cancer. Fun fact. That's great. We support causes here at Two Game Mats. <laughs> that is true. Um... Yeah, I mean, I have to unpack my box as well in my room, if that's okay. That's fine. I have to I was ask just, you? Because I, I feel saying, like I, was, I needed to ask you if I could I was, borrow the scissors, I was but it just feels... I was just curious, and I'm like, oh, I'm relieved. Oh, they're there. It just Great. felt a little accusatory. It's, no, it's not if accusatory. If I was going to be describing your tone, it's not accusatory. I would call it accusatory. I would accuse you of a lot <laughs> more than just stealing scissors, Like darling. being an icon? Like being a bitch. I've never been a bitch, darling. And it's weird, because you're in such a mood today. It's so weird. <laughs> Let's just start this series, guys. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to 2Game Match, your, the podcast, and it's back on schedule, we're back on Mondays because we have moved and we're in our new home, now this is our first recording in the new home, how does I know, it how feel? does it sound, well, I, how does it sound? I mean, I don't it's know echoey yet. It's echoey. I mean, it's echoey room. in the room, but I feel like the mic is there's going to be fine. Floors. Yes. Oh, the, yeah, the mic could be fine, yeah, I mean, but does it like a, sound, you're the one wearing the headphones. Yes, so but I, I also it, hear you talking at me, so it's like, I'm not really going to know until we're done and I can listen back. I'm excited. I mean, it'll be fine. How, so how was your week? How was the move for you? I'm sore. I'm tired. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. My room is a mess. I have, yeah. no idea. I have to get new like bedroom furniture. So like I don't really know how much of my Wait, bedroom. Wait, what new bedroom really furniture? I'm going to get a new dresser and a new desk oh. and like, you know, a new chair. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, that chair had been, that chair wasn't going up and down anymore. Like that chair. You oh really... girl, I found that chair on the street. Did you really? I absolutely did. I well, didn't pay for a chair. Get I mean, yeah, well, you had really driven it into the ground. But I think that's fine. I yeah, I got, I, to, it got its use. It did. And so I'm very proud of it. Yes. Um, and yeah, new desk, new dresser. I got all these things for free, by the way. <laughs> when I moved to LA, <laughs> the, the room I got came with the desk, came with the dresser. So now I'm just like, it's time for some new Who ones. was in your room before? Uh, Matt Schley. Oh, and he left the desk. And, and the he left the desk you. and the dresser. That's like very little, kind. little, you know. I think Matt Schley listens to this because he, at one point, Schley. he like t- uh, tweeted us and said something about my saying that Super Mario World was hard. And it is hard, but apparently it wasn't hard for Matt Schley. So he lives in Japan now, so I bet he's We love him. Matt Schley is the about. reason why me and Matt Palmer met. That's because true. Because I was replacing Matt Schley, who is not a gay Matt, by the way. He's no, a, he's straight a straight Matt. Matt. Um, and uh, I replaced him in his room, which is how I moved in with Matt Palmer. Yes. And uh, Eric and Brian are two straight roommates, and that it's how the, the entire... World, I know began. that's how two game mats got started. So, this God is basically said, dedicated to Matt Schley. Matt Schley, <laughs> dedicated to Matt Schley. That should be the title of the podcast. We love that. <laughs> we love that. So, um, yes, well, my week was also good. The move was intense, and the thing is. You don't remember how tiring a move is until you do it again. I feel like it reminds me of... No, no, until you wake up the next morning and your arms are killing you. It reminds me of uh, women having birth. It's like Uh, they... uh, (laughs) I think this is veering into problematic territory. It's not, because you're not listening to what I'm saying. It it, it reminds me of how women, when they they give birth the first time, it's very painful, but there's something in the mind, something molecularly is going to make them forget all of the painful feelings and just remember all the loving feelings they have for the child. So... When they have to have another baby or want to have another baby, they don't remember how painful it is. And they're just like, yes, let's <laughs> do like, this No, again. I'm going to love this baby because I love my current baby. But you don't remember how much work that yeah. baby was. Then they get in that hospital bed and, and they're like, like oh. oh, no, it's all coming back to me now. Uh, Celine. And it's tough. So I feel like that's that's our birth story. Yeah, but <laughs> it is worth it. Like this apartment is like a beautiful child. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about having children. Oh, no, but like children's having children's worth it. Too. Sometimes just, you can just, get a clunker. Of that's a kid. true. But um, having this apartment is really worth it. It, like oh it's, my it's god! Beautiful, every it is like, stunning. We have had one guest. <laughs> no, and she loved and it. she loved it. I mean, um, we plan to have more guests, but it's only been a couple of days. Of course, and we're not having like real like no. hardcore guests until like you know things are put in place. Yes, I would like to get my my um, art up on the wall. That is what I'd like to have before the housewarming party, and I feel like that's doable. So totally something to dream about. Exactly. 
Oh my gosh. Well, I feel like even though we were gone for like a week and a couple days, it feels like five years since we've recorded like, yes, a podcast. It feels like a million years since we've done a podcast. But I, in looking for stories today, I was like, it's kind of nothing. There's a lot really? of music that's been released to talk about. Oh, a lot of music, yes, that we haven't been able to react to on two game matches. Yes, we've and been people so are busy. mad at us. Sorry, and we've because been... Kesha released in the morning, which yes. is never helpful. And we won't be talking about Kesha in this section, but we'll be talking about her later. Okay. <laughs> Um, but there is a couple of news stories that I wanted to talk about. So this is news for idiots. If you haven't listened to the show before, this is where we talk about, you know, dumb news, things that happened this week. So, um, oh God. This is not dumb news, by the this way. I'm looking at this. is the dumbest news. This is and the we, best news. Okay. We all know that I have been a Team Tay all year. I have loved Lover. I love the songs. I love what she has done this year outside of me. And I really wanted everything she did this year to be a slay for me. But alas... <laughs> Lest we forget the fucking Cats movie. (laughs) And it has come out this week and it's a surprise to no one that Taylor Swift has co-written a song, a new song that they're trying to get an Oscar for, for the Cats film entitled Beautiful Ghosts. And uh, it was written with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Of course, it was just thrown in so it can compete for an Oscar. And (laughs) she has described the song as like, you know, what is the, the little cat's? I don't never learn the name of these cats. What's the cat? Victoria. Victoria. Yes. Okay, so the Victoria, little kitten, the little white little kitten was like ballet. given away or whatever. And this song comes after Jennifer Hudson sings "Memory," and she talks about all the beautiful, the beautiful life she's had before. And the little kitten's like, "Well, at least you had a beautiful life to remember. My life's always been shit. At least you have beautiful." No, ghosts. she's worried that like, oh, the, uh, these beautiful things like won't happen to me. Like, at least you had a life. Like, I was dumped when I was a That's baby. That's literally the same thing I said. Not really. <laughs> it's Not the same. Exactly. This is dumb. <laughs> this song sounds dumb. This concept is dumb. The Cats movie looks dumb. I want to remove myself from this narrative. I have no guys, interest guys, in this at all. Guys, give the song a Pulitzer. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm so excited. Everything about it sounds amazing. This it is the sounds... year of Taylor Swift for me, or this is this half of the year is the half of the year of Taylor Swift for me because everything she did was in the second half of the year. Mm-hmm. I. I think the song sounds beautiful, it and sounds- as you all know, I stand this Cats movie long before Jesus it. Christ. I even saw a clip of it. I am so ready for this song. I'm so ready for this movie. I'm so ready for this moment in my life post Cats movie. I am ready. The for times all of it. I resent this podcast and YouTube thing the most is when we have to react to dumb shit like the <laughs> Cats movie and the fucking live musical events. It's just like I'd rather jump off a bridge than see this fucking movie. Oh Truly. my god, my brother! Every single year when I'm home for Christmas we see a Christmas Carol at McCarter Theater which is the greatest production of a Christmas Carol of all time um, and uh, my brother was like when do you want to see a Christmas Carol this year and I was like well I fly home back home December 19th so anytime after that and he texted me yesterday I got tickets for December 20th and I was like Michael that is when I was planning on seeing cats I'm furious it's fine I'll see cats in the morning and a Christmas Carol at night because okay. is this my December 20th will revolve around cats? I'm sorry. And the song sounds beautiful. Angela, it sounds very fine. It sounds lovely. It sounds It fine. sounds like a lovely melody. It, it, I think it's an appropriate place to have a song in the show, especially if they're trying to expand on this character of Victoria and make it a thing. Give her a song. Have Taylor Swift be nominated for an Oscar. It's going to be Taylor versus Beyonce for this Oscar. And I'm... I'm living for this. And then also, like, of course, she can't just let this new Francesca girl have this song in this moment. She's like, and then I'll be singing the studio version. It's like Taylor. And we will react to it. (laughs) When is it released? I need to know. I just, I really don't want to hear this. I am not invested in this. I can't believe we're living in a world in which there's a Cats movie that no one wants to see. I just can't wait until it comes out and it flops. I can't wait until it comes out and everyone is proven wrong and it's the most critically acclaimed movie that's ever existed. There's no way you think that's going to You know, there's a chance. I hope that it comes out and it flops so badly that this song doesn't even get nominated and then it's done and out of the conversation. That's what I hope. That Mm -hmm. is my hope. And I love Taylor and I want good things for her, but just not this. Not this, not now. So, one big event that happened in the past, I don't know, week and a half that we haven't discussed is everyone's favorite, you know, Broadway gay, Taylor Swift's confidant. Don't call him Broadway (laughs) gay, please. I mean, he is that. He knows and does some Broadway things. He didn't make his mark by being a Broadway gay. I mean, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, Tadra Call. Yes. (laughs) Has been called out. On the interwebs by his formal personal assistant, Tommy McKissock, I can't say that last name, um, for 
basically shady business practices. He says many things about how Todrick would not pay the people that worked with him, but he'd spend all this money on flying boys out from these, like, you know, escort sites. And, uh, you know, but only he pays so much for OnlyFans every month, but won't pay the people around him. Tommy ta- says that he has been sexually assaulted by um, Chester Lockhart, who I believe is in the Todrick world. And, um, Todrick got mad at Tommy about it. Basically, uh, Tommy reported it to his boss and his boss blamed him for it. So that was bad. And um, I feel like just various things are coming out about Todrick, all of which are not surprising. (laughs) (laughs) Let's just say it. I love that I was trying to think of the kind way to say it, but that is No, it's absolutely not surprising. It's just so in line with what... And like I feel like there was a story about they were shooting a music video and they had two like dark-skinned black dancers and he turned around and said, oh, we've got to figure something out about this. It's looking a little too chocolate here. And it's just like... I don't know, just the, the you know, internalized racism and the fact that he says that Tommy says he treats everyone on his staff like sex workers. And it's just like, Todrick is one of those people that, like, I've always respected because I think he's talented and he's made a lane for himself. But sure. there's something. And then he works very hard. He, does. he a- Like, even though the stuff he releases, I'm just like, this is insanely gimmicky and easy and just is here to get clicks. And, right. And he just kind of rehashes the same stuff over and over again. He works very hard and he puts content out there and he's kind of like the first person I feel who made a name for himself by literally just releasing any and all types of content. I mean, you know, is it any and all if it's all different versions of the cell block tango? (laughs) I don't know. Well, I mean, he did music. He did sketches. He he did. He was known for kind of doing right anything like he was just eager to become famous and it was very apparent and easy to see and I'm so surprised that people fell for it (laughs) (laughs) but you know what hey good for you I mean you got you got the fan base and you put stuff out there and you work hard I mean and he's very much now just tweeting inspirational quotes about like when you fly high like people are gonna try to shoot you down kind of shit but the thing that happens off of this kind of tweet thread is that people who have been wronged by Todrick do come out and say well actually this is how I was treated on set when I worked for him he berated me in front of the entire cast and crew so cruelly and he said he did it for my benefit to give me a thicker skin Ooh, um, a dress Drag queen contestant, I believe Manila said, well, you still owe me for hosting your Halloween party since last year or so, dot, dot, dot. Because Todrick's like, well, the video just came out and like they have up until 45 days to pay them. And it's like, you you know that that is, it's been over 45 days since oh, you God, paid so yeah. many of these people. And, and look, I get it. As someone who has had to pay people before, it's hard and it sucks. But like, you have to you do have it. You have to do it. Yes. And like, Todrick. You are at the point now where you have the money and resources uh, absolutely to do it. You do. And the fact that you're spending all this money on, you know, going to strip clubs and, you know, OnlyFans and flying boys out to have sex with you. It's like, let's just redirect some of that money. Like, of course, those are nice things that to, if you'd want to have those when you have that much <laughs> money, like good for you, you know, live your life. But how about you pay the people that put you where you are today? The reason that your stuff, you know, at times looks good and is professional and sleek and, you know, that people are buying tickets to the show it's not just oh it's not just you up there like there are dancers there are people there are production uh, assistants and production people that just haven't been paid and that's not right it's yeah, not right no. and it's not okay pay the people pay the people Whitney remix did you uh uh look through that the tech the tweet thread of tommy's i did on twitter i had no idea he was also you know had porn on his twitter oh. of himself so like i was just scrolling through his twitter and i was like whoa okay oh, yeah, no, no. let's get to the tech the tweet thread. yeah no i don't think i went to his actual page but that oh i, mean, I went to the page and that, i was surprised by what i saw that lines things up for me and also i mean not that we're team Scooter Braun or anything, but like when t- obviously Todrick came out and was like, I've been let go from Scooter Braun. They're like, I fired him because of his racist and homophobic practices. One of Scooter Braun's people were like, actually, we let you go because you weren't paying fans or like you were, fans were paying you for a product that you were never sending to them. And you were just kind of stealing money from the people that were supporting you. And that's why we let you go. So damn, it's just like, OK, I hope that this, you know, whether this takes him down or not or whether he's canceled or not, I hope this at least is the wake up 
up call he needs that he's like, okay, if I want to continue in this industry, I have to play by these rules. I have to pay the people that work on things for me. I feel like just as an adult person, even though like me and you aren't famous, it's like if people work for us to like do something for us that we need for a music thing or for Devos, it's like, you pay them you just because that's them. what you do. Like that's even if do. the budget's not huge, it's like the the right thing to do to pay people for their work. Creative people are so used to working for free, and it's bullshit. Like you yes. shouldn't have to be working to get your name out there. You should be paid for your work like anyone else does. Like when you do a job, you exactly. get paid for Especially it. Especially when you're doing a job for someone who is very famous and yes. very rich. Yes. So, so I I these are things he can change about himself easily. I hope he does. I hope he does. You know, people enjoy him. Yes. And I still won't watch his shit. But I mean, if you know. people will and people like it and, you know, uh, just I, if things are kosher behind the scenes, I have no issue with him. Of but course. Clearly, yeah. as of right now, they are not. Um. OK. Your favorite movie of the year. Uh huh. Joker. Oh, <laughs> is now the most successful R-rated film of all time. It is not my favorite movie of the year. <laughs> you don't hear Matt Steele's obsessed with Joker. I, He's just like he can't wait to dress up. As it the Joker was next fine. Week. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, Joaquin Phoenix is very good in do it. Do you prefer it to Deadpool, which is the R-rated film that it beat? Girl, <laughs> you think I saw Deadpool? Bitch, you saw Joker. Is Deadpool uh, a uh, is Deadpool the uh, superhero? The funny superhero? Uh, yes, that's Ryan Reynolds. Yes, yes, yes. Why? Why would I compare it to? Deadpool. Oh, well, just because that is the movie it beat uh, in the R rated, like the most successful R rated film of all time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. This is news to this me. This is news. Um, I, I have not seen Deadpool, so like I don't know which one I would prefer. Yeah. Um, Joker, you know, ha- had some moments that were very well done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair. Uh, you know, I, I, would, you s- I would not call Joker the masterpiece that some uh, heterosexuals are calling it, <laughs> but you know. Have you seen all of like videos of all those people dancing or like taking Instagram pictures on the Joker steps? Yes, good for them, I guess. I guess it's cool. I guess it's an iconic image you know I I don't have much to say <laughs> I don't care about that but I just thought we should all discuss how much I had Matt no Steele idea. loves Joker I had no idea why because <laughs> he loves it <laughs> no no it's no cats um, Jesus Christ. I had no idea that Deadpool was the the highest earning num- uh, R rated film it was wow I know good for Deadpool hey I mean I know people love it taking so. over the world we, we all know this I know a lot of people were very mad. They were like, Deadpool was should have been nominated for Best Picture. Why wasn't it nominated for Best Picture? And they were really upset about it. Well, I hope they got to sleep that night. In <laughs> <laughs> uh, news that only is news because I want to make a comment on the headline, an extended cut of Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was released this past weekend. And how fucking dare there be an extended <laughs> version of this Girl, film? Girl, I thought we saw the extended version. <laughs> exactly. What else could there be? Like, literally, you should make a movie length version of it and have it be an hour and a half so that people would want to see it and like have it you know go down smoothly it is literally the longest and most useless movie nothing happens until 20 minutes at the end and to me I'm not really on the boards like Matt Steele is but it feels like the buzz for this film has died it has died a little so, bit ever since everyone's talking about how great the Irishman is apparently is and of course Parasite came out right I still need to see Parasite and so, I'm excited. Um, and so uh, did you hear also uh, which is actually kind of really cool uh, Quentin Tarantino um, every time he's released a movie in China, mm. uh, he's had to re-edit it. Okay, uh, to you know, com- you know, for the Chinese regulations, you know, yeah. it's a very strict country and everything. Yeah, uh, and so China was like, you need to completely re-edit this movie. And Quentin Tarantino was for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was just like, no, I'm not. I'm just not going to release it wow. in China because I'm not going to re-edit this movie that I'm very proud of. And He's that proud of that movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. Like it's, it, you can be proud of your movie. I mean, you can. I mean, but. good for you. Um, but he, uh, he's just like, I'm not going to release it in China. They're gonna, it's the, the movie is what it is, and so it's kind of like, you know what? Good for you. I have to say, even though I was not the biggest fan of the movie, good right. for you for sticking to your guns and being proud of what you made. Yeah, and, and not. Um, uh, working with you know the Chinese government, which is has some problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tadric of governments. Uh, yeah, it totally is. <laughs> Um, in other happy news, <laughs> um, Lizzo's Truth Hurts topped the Hot 100 for a seventh week, matching Iggy Azalea's record for like the longest number one of a female rap artist. Oh, damn. So, it's going to beat it. I was going to say, I don't feel like there's anything coming out that's going to topple it. I don't feel like anybody is a yeah. threat at this point, right? Yeah, no. So I Until bet- Beautiful Ghost comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I can't believe like, hey, I don't know that, t- that the song Lover is doing very well. Like, I feel like it's not. Yeah. How high did Lover I peak? I feel like it peaked in the week that it was released just off of like the back of sales and like has not gotten back up there. Like, I don't think it's top 10 at radio right now. And I'm just like, 
Put out Cruel Summer. <laughs> what was the last? What was the last ballad that hit number one? Ballad. Yeah, I mean, was it the Charlie Puth uh, um, uh, song for what's his name who died? Oh, my, that's so long. That ago. was very long. It was 2014. I mean, or number was, one, or, uh, I don't know, but John that Legend? Lewis, that Lewis, maybe. I don't know, the, but Lewis Capaldi's song has done very well, and it is a ballad, ballad, ballad. Yes, it is. And that song is doing better than Lover is. So I'm just, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but I wanted to move on to Cruel Summer because, like, you got to give the people what they want. Okay, let's and they give want the Cruel Summer. They want. they want Cruel Summer. Lover is lovely, and I love yeah. that she and Joe Alwyn are happy, but, like, all right, let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, Truth it. Hurts, Lizzo. Um, wasn't there a remix of uh, something? It was a remix of Good as Hell came out this week with, with Ariana, Ariana Grande. Grande. Did you listen to it? I didn't, no. I did. It is completely useless. Okay. <laughs> it is just like Ariana comes in at the very end, sings like uh, some ad libs and like a chorus line, and then it's over. And it's like, I get it. We're just trying to push it and have it be number one and stuff, but. I just still would love to hear a song from her current album chart. <laughs> I really would. Good as Hell came out two, three years ago. Yeah. Like, let's hear. Some new music. Okay. Keep it on an album, girl. Let's let's hear that. But, you know, if her best stuff is earlier, I guess she's just introducing herself. And maybe this next album will be, you know, something she can release singles I from. would imagine, yeah. Because, I mean, you know, she's huge right now. She is. Oh, my God. Biggest yeah. artist. She's so. going to have everyone wanting to write with her. I, I mean, I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait to see what she and Max Martin come up with. I feel I like know. that's always the thing. It's like if you become big on your first album, your second album, you work with Max Martin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an achievement you can unlock. Um, so Jojo released her new single called Sabotage featuring Chica. Uh, I've been singing it the past two days. I have not. I no, I have. <laughs> like, I, it's been stuck in my head. I love Joanna, as we all have seen on the YouTube. And I am, this song is growing on me. I think it's unique and interesting, but I feel like it does sound like an album track. Like, it sounds like an album track off of Mad Love. And, uh. I don't know. It gets me like high heels. Like that is where I would put it in the album order. And sure, but high heels is good. High heels is good, but like, why are we releasing this? I don't. I just don't yeah, get first, what first we're doing. Yeah, first single is a little interesting. Yes. Yeah. And she said on her Twitter, like, I'm not thinking of it as singles. I'm thinking about just putting in songs out and putting visuals out, and like that's very lovely and great. But like, you know, we want to see it have hits. So let's okay. put out the hits. All right. Well, what's the most uh, singly? We're gonna wait and see what the I most singly song on the album. Is. I did think Chica did a, an amazing job. She's an amazing rapper. Uh, uh, who I feel like is blown up off of Instagram and Twitter and just like I've just seen her rapping in her bedroom a lot and I love mm-hmm. that Jojo gave her a chance to shine on a bigger platform and I think she did a great job on the song I think the bass line is really cool and I just find it a little it's just a little mellow like and I'm not, mellow's not always bad but it's mellow and also like not melodically terribly distinct and I don't know, it just doesn't, it doesn't pop for me. Okay. You know, I want it to be better than it is. Okay. Do you think the album is going to be a, a mellow album? I think it'll be mellow, but I think it'll have very strong melodic moments. And I just don't think this is one of them. Okay. For me personally. Okay. And again, I love Jojo. So the, if the Jojo fans are getting mad at me, I apologize. I just have to, I have to state my truth. You know, I'm an honest person. I mean, truth hurts. It does. Lizzo <laughs> told us. People call me Honest Abe for this reason. You know? Sure. <laughs> I remember you, sometimes you always say that, that you're, people call you Honest Abe. And they I'm just do. like, what? No, no one. I'm calls so you that. honest. Everyone no, calls no me. No one bad. would call you Abe. Everyone would call me honest no one would Abe. Call you Abe. Sorry, some of us are honest in the room, and some of us just lie. I have not <laughs> lied once since I've been sitting down. Okay, I was gonna say. I was like, <laughs> let's see what this it sentence is. I do believe that one. <laughs> what else have I? I don't think I've lied all morning. <laughs> this is the shortest window. <laughs> I don't think I've lied in four hours. Okay, but like, what's the worst thing I've lied about in my life? I just feel like you will massage the truth so that you don't appear mean. I ha- I have a nice way of putting things. <laughs> I've, I've I'm often diplomatic. Mm. I try to be diplomatic. And then the camera goes off like that was have. fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so wait, have you heard that there are first reactions to Greta Gerwig's Little Women movie? And I did. I, re- talk I read already. I read all of those. Of so wait, what? Where did it? Did it just get like a screen somewhere? Where did this happen? Oh, I, t- I didn't read that. Okay, <laughs> I, um, I literally just read all. Of it. it was the day we moved. Wait, SAG <laughs> Astra hosted a screen. You're in SAG. Why didn't you get to go, girl? I did not get the invite. <laughs> that's oh, it's so because rude. It, it, the, the, the um, mail was probably sent to my old. Oh, <laughs> that's totally why Greta knew. I was like, I gotta get Matt Steele here. He's in SAG now. Well, we I love him. Not, I did not get an invite to that. 
but that's okay. I mean, Kyle Buchanan says that it's a fresh approach that makes you rethink familiar material, but it also can make simple plot and character developments a bit harder to locate. For my money, MVP in Little Millman is Florence Pugh. Who is yes, she? I hear that Florence Pugh is the standout. I don't know I her. Florence Pugh, she was the lead in Midsummer, and she was excellent. Did you like Midsummer? <laughs> um, I liked Midsummer a lot more than I liked Hereditary. Okay, Midsummer. I same director. I, it's the same director. Okay. Yes, and I uh, I thought Midsummer visually was amazing. I thought the story. Story was really cool, really fun. Um, the there were uh, some parts of how the ending turned out that like I personally would have changed, but no, I liked Midsummer. Okay, yeah, I liked Midsummer. All right, well, and, she, and, she, but, and she's excellent. Like she's really, really great. All right, um, yeah. So I like Midsummer a lot. What I I feel like it's bloody or like uh, is it, it's not over. There's is one it just dark. There's I remember a cu- there's a couple of bloody. Moments. I've heard there's, not to spoil. I've heard somebody like. Committing suicide, like jumping off a yes, bridge or something. Yes, that's, that's like, like pretty bloody. I don't need um, to see the, that. the crazy thing with Midsummer that's really cool is like it's so dark, but yet it's so, everything is in daytime. Mm. Like, cause it's it, the sun never sets, so it's just always light and bright, and everything is like beautiful and bright and should be happy, but it's like very like scary and dark. all right. It's really cool. I yeah. like that in theory. I don't think I need to see it. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, it's definitely not a you movie. I, I also don't feel like I probably need to. Um, See Little Women just because I, I mean, I don't care. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I hear that it's the adaptation is a little different. Not that it's different from the book, but like certain things that have been focused on in other adaptations of mm. Little Women aren't focused in this and they go to like different parts of the book, like different parts of the book are expanded upon. Okay. That's what I got from these tweets about the screening. All right. Yeah. And so, wait, does Flo- Florence Pugh would be nominated for Best Supporting Actress? Supporting Actress. She'd nominated? be playing Amy. Okay. Who's the, I believe, the youngest sister. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. So, I guess we'll see. But, you know, I feel like that's another movie you're excited about. Honestly, I'm excited about any movies that come out and take Oscar award shine from movies that have already come out and that I don't really think <laughs> So, good for Little Woman. You better work. Greta Gerwig and Sir Ronan and, you I know, know Greta, Greta Gerwig and her uh, husband, Noah Bumbach. Oh, did they do it together? Uh, no, they. He has a marriage story coming out this year. Oh, um, and, and that's her husband. I didn't realize that. I am I, interested in that. I'm pretty sure they're married. I don't know. I are they, they, are they together? Uh, are they dating? I, no, I think they're. I think they're actually married. Great. Um, we love marriage but, uh, here on yeah. Two Gay Mats. Yeah. <laughs> Keep, go to the next thing. I'll look this. Okay. Up. <laughs> uh, just to speak to um, how we have little to talk about this week. Adele went to Drake's birthday party. <laughs> oh, skip this. What the What the hell? She Come looks on. amazing though. Did you see her? No, no. Well, look, she looks amazing. She's lost weight. I mean, I guess she's like on a fitness journey because she tweeted about her Instagram. Like, I used to cry, but now I sweat and like took a, had a picture from this event. That's cool. I'm glad they, that she had a great time. Uh, Greta Gerwig is still married to Noah Bob. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, at that birthday party, apparently Rihanna showed up and Rihanna said like that after that whole MTV award thing where Drake professed his love for her, she was like very done with Drake, but apparently they've mended fences. So Maybe they're back to being friends. We love Drake and Rihanna as friends because they've made great music together. And I don't want you know her to write him off just because he's a corny loser, you know. Jesus! Oh <laughs> I mean, my he god, is. he is, and I feel like that's okay. <laughs> if that's not a mean thing. You called him a loser. I, that's fine. He's just like kind of like a whiny, corny person. No, is that but, rude? I don't. Okay, like that's but using rude. the word "losers" like, very strong. It's not strong. Losers, not like I hate him and I hope he dies. He's just like, oh, look, look, look a little loser. No, losers are very aggressive. I word. don't feel like losers are aggressive. It's calling if someone walked up to you and was just like, "You're a loser." Like, eh, see you around. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> it's like there are meaner things that can be said. Um, I just brought this up because I feel like no one's talking about it and I think it's very, it's very, very weird. weird. It's very Do you weird. understand the story? Okay, let's tell the people. Apparently there's a transgender man suing Rosario Dawson and her family for an alleged assault. And I don't completely understand what's going on here, but a former employee of the Dawson family filed a suit that alleges Dawson and three of her family members violated his civil rights by discriminating against him for his transgender sad status. He's also suing for assault, battery, trespassing, and labor violations. Uh, the family misgendered him multiple times each day with deliberate indifference as to the appropriate way to address Mr. Finley. Dawson acted with deliberate indifference and did nothing to correct the situation. Rosario's mother is accused of battering him with help from her daughter. Dawson allegedly actively restrained Finley by sitting on top of him so that her mother could continue the assault. 
What the yeah, fuck? That, that part That's is the so weird. To me. It's like thing. Rosario Dawson like held this guy down so that her mom could beat him. Like what is like, happening? That's there needs to be an expansion on that. Absolutely. Like, I want to see the visual. I want to know exactly <laughs> how this happened. Well, I don't, don't want to see. I don't want to see like a reenactment, but like I want to know how it happened. I, I I'm so don't. confused by. And this. like, what is this about? And like, if you hired a transgender man, why would you misgender him on purpose to just to be rude? And like, also. Cory Booker, what do you have to say about this? I know, he hasn't said anything. Like, I, that's what, because I only got this story from this source yeah. that I saw. Yeah. And so, which makes me kind of feel like, is it true? Because I feel like if it was, then like more people would be talking about I it. I think it's very strange that people aren't talking about yeah, it. Yeah. So I don't, who knows? I, I mean, I feel like if I there's mean, a if, lawsuit and he was granted a restraining order against the mother. So it's not nothing. Yeah. Like the, the court granted him that. And I mean, if he's going, I don't know. I feel like there is, some truth to it and I'd like someone to comment on it because weirdly enough Rosario Dawson's in like the political conversation for whatever reason right now and I think this is really really weird and fucked up and I hope Cory Booker has an answer and I hope someone asks him because like what the hell is this yeah I I I just want to know I want to hear from somebody about this right yeah because when I read it I was just like oh this is gonna be huge news and then then it wasn't I mean it's weird. Maybe the Cory Booker people are silencing everyone and like paying people off not to report the story. Silencing everyone like on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Well, silencing more outlets from like saying anything. It's like how, you know, people have power. People do things like that. Oh, come on. But like, I feel like the Republicans would take this and like I don't amplify think, I don't think it. They're really focusing on Cory Booker. No shade. I mean, of course, of <laughs> course. Like they're too. That's true. Yes. Um, so if anyone can give us more updates on what's happening there, I would like to know, cause that was so scary and triggering and it's just like, wait, so we're just not going to say anything about this. No one's going to talk about this. I'd like yeah. to know more. So yeah, who knows? I'd like, I need someone to do a deep dive. That's not me. Cause I, I hope everyone and be nice to everyone is the moral of this. the moral <laughs> is if this has been done, Rosario Dawson, and her family is fucking trash. Oh my, well, that too. <laughs> That's the real moral. Um, so wait, I think we should talk about Camila Cabello. Okay. <laughs> because. What's happening there is also a question on my mind. And she has released, I believe, four to five songs mm-hmm. from this new album. All of them, I don't think, the first two have videos. Um, that Shameless song, is that what it's called? Yeah. And Liar, which I actually enjoyed Liar. I like Liar, too. And then she put out two more songs called Easy and uh, something else that I can't remember. There was another song. And she performed the two new songs without videos on SNL. And the thing is, she got a lot of praise and talk about her SNL performances. People said she sounded great. And, like, she had very interesting costuming and, you know, just a stage set up. But she's promoting songs that aren't the singles with videos. And nothing is becoming a hit because there's so many options out there. Senorita with Sean Mendez is still so huge. But it's like, what is she doing? What is her team doing? What is the plan here? Like, I personally feel like the fact that there are so many songs that are being promoted at the same time is confusing for the mm-hmm. public and for radio. And they should have just focused on one. They should have just put all of their, you know, chutzpah behind Liar and saw what it did. Because now it's like when um, Dreamgirls was nominated for three Oscars. The songs from Dreamgirls were nominated. There were three different ones. It split the votes. Yes. And so all of these songs are splitting plays and splitting downloads, splitting streams. And it's like we, we've got to consolidate the listenership, right? I guess. But I mean, like, hey, like Beyonce. They releases it all at once and everything. Camila Cabello I mean, is yes, not I know. Yes, Beyonce. I know. But, you know, uh, it's a new dawn, a new day. It's what I don't know. she's I mean, trying to do. I hope Senorita's on her album. I'm sure it will be because she's going to want to get the most streams she can that week and it doesn't sound like any of these other songs are going to become the hit that Senorita is. Right? I guess. I mean, Senorita, Senorita also is featuring someone else who's very famous. Yeah. Like it, it, they're also like quote unquote dating. <laughs> True. You know. It's just very strange. I feel like she was on the cover like Havana was so huge that she was on the cover of Rolling Stone as like Pop's next big thing and to have her be slumping like this is I don't know hard. I, I think she has a, an interesting voice. I think she's unique. I mean, she obviously has some problematic things in her past, whether or not those are true or whatever. Uh, but I, I, I'm surprised at how poorly she's doing right now. Okay. I don't know. I, I was just, like, as she's doing poorly, but she like has a number one. But it's not her. <laughs> it's not her song. Like this. Like, yeah. It's she's doing poorly. <laughs> like yeah. her album rollout is going poorly, and I wish someone would step in and fix things because I don't think all of the songs are bad. Some of them are. I guess a lot of them are forgettable to me. I can't even remember one of the names, but. Mm-hmm. 
Liar, I think, is quite good. Honestly, though, like in this day and age, I would say the past like four years, I feel like all rollouts have been bad. <laughs> like, do you feel that way? I do. I feel like there was a rollout happening recently that I was like, they are doing everything right. And I don't remember which one. I mean, Cardi B did things right. She put out the right singles and put out the album at the right time. And, yeah. Um, Taylor Swift, I don't think, is doing much wrong, except like me was obviously was not the, the super huge best uh, first single choice. Right. But at least she kind of had like a traditional ish type rollout. Right. I mean, it's still early, obviously, but I mean, what Cash is doing right now. I, I that trailer, so, I, I guess we'll talk about it. <laughs> you and your like, I, 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 I think that might have been the, because that's one of the things. It's like we are focusing on one song, but you can hear that there are other songs in that trailer mm-hmm. that are going to be great. Like, get ready, hold on to your butts, people. Cash is back. I, I think that rollout, if, you know, if things go according to plan, could be iconic. So, okay. Yes. Um, so I think that's honestly it for news. Really? Future. You're going to bring up fucking Adele going to Drake's birthday party and you're not going to bring up Whoopi Goldberg playing at Dolores and Sister Act in London? Oh, I have no thought. Oh, Jesus that. Christ. OK, so Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> is reprising her role as Dolores Van Cartier in Sister Act, the musical in London, starring opposite Jennifer Saunders. <laughs> she from Saunders? She's the, like from Absolutely Fabulous. She, uh, you would recognize never her. Gonna. She's a British lady. She And so... um. And so Whoopi Goldberg, I believe, is taking time off the view to to like reprise her most iconic role, like for the stage. I'm so excited. That's because, great. Because the role is, you know, she has to belt a lot. I was going to say, aren't there songs that like she might not be yeah, able to do? It was, played by, yeah. it was uh, portrayed by Bettina Miller on stage, who has an excellent voice and can sing really well. And, and Whoopi Goldberg... I can, you know, sing, but, you know, it's not like, right. She's not like a vocalist. I'm excited. I fully anticipate her just like speak singing all the songs, just Rex Harrison, Harrisoning it throughout the entire time. There needs to be a new cast recording. I'm excited. Okay, great. (laughs) It's going to be great. You know, I love Sister Act. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. Yes. No, I, 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 I love Lauryn Hill and Sister Act too. (sighs) Great. Beautiful voice. Yes. We love Lauryn Hill. We love Lauryn Hill. But Sister Act, like in general, the franchise. I don't know that I've, I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I have no real memories. I know there are nuns. That's insane. I wish them all the best. Sister Act is such a classic. Yeah. It's, I can't talk to you. (laughs) Like Sister Act is legitimately one of the greatest movies that's ever been made. I believe you. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I have no negative thoughts towards it. Okay. Okay. This is, is why that you, fine? this is why you don't appreciate Whoopi Goldberg. I don't. Happens. I mean, I, I'm sure she's 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 been on the View for a while. So that's she great. Is she's is a fucking down. legend. Whoopi Goldberg is a legend. Okay. Thank you, America. All right. We'll be back soon with more Two Gay Mads podcast. Bye. <laughs> Time to hit send on those emails because we're on the email my heart. Yes. yes. What is email my heart, Matt? Email Steele? my heart is when everyone can email us at two gay mats at gmail.com to spell T W O, where they can just email us questions or sometimes people just email us nice, happy thoughts, which, at, we, appreciate. which we appreciate and we love. Um, and we, you might have your question answered on the two gay mats podcast, which is like honestly like everyone's dream. Honestly, like, let's get real. Um, so let's dive right into it. We have some emails. Uh, first email is from Alexis and Alexis asks uh, well first of all Alexis says that we make her smile Aww. and that she loves the podcast thank like, you well, so much a smile uh, so she asks Matt Palmer specifically what are your feelings about Kalani if you don't have any I suggest listening to Footsteps featuring music Soul Child from her new EP While We Wait it's really sincere R&B music that we are lacking these days what do you think about Kalani? I love Kalani. Uh, I was very into the Sweet Sexy Savage album back in 2017. She had so many songs on the album that I thought were so, so good. Um, Keep On, Distraction. Um, which other one? Um, Advice is great. Too Much, Get Like, In My Feelings. Just like she, I feel, is an R&B artist that's like the hearkening back of 90s R&B, which I mean, clearly featuring music Soul Child is very much in that vein. Um, so I haven't caught up with too much of the stuff she's released after that, but I do like the song she has with Zed out right now. I think it's called Good Thing and that song sounds like a hit to me and she just, I don't know, I love that she's like a bisexual butterfly and uh, so beautiful. Oh, she's and bisexual? She is, yeah. She's okay, sung songs about ladies as well. And um, I have nothing but positive feelings towards her. She's a great artist and I can't wait to hear more from her. Love. That's great. Love. I know absolutely nothing about her, so now I need to, I guess, know more about her. You should. Listen to Sweet Sexy Savage. I gotta support the bisexuals. You've got to. 
I had all I mean, of them. I mean, you have before. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was it great. It was right there. That was great. Yes, my ex-boyfriend was bisexual. Um, uh, that, that was a great one. Thank you. That was really I appreciate clever. that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Oh, now oh. you're making me think about my ex-boyfriend. Okay, well, move and on. I, to the, no, no, no. <laughs> I, that was not my aim. Wow, we, this, it could be turned into this type of episode. I think you're just sad. We're just like deep dive and we, we become sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We belong for the, the bisexuals in our lives. I don't think... I don't think I've dated a bisexual. you I feel like you've dated a bisexual. Who? I uh that one guy. I think was he like really into dragons or something, or he was a Wiccan. He wasn't bisexual. He was. Gay. Oh, and we went on like, one date. Okay, but, <laughs> but like, he was he was gay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm I sure you've dated a bisexual. Guy. No, no one that's told me they were bisexual. Okay. Yes. Okay, it's fun. You should do it. <laughs> All right. No. <laughs> They're very nice people. <laughs> um, uh, a next question comes from Helen, and Helen uh, wants to know, I know you've mentioned One Direction a couple times on your main channel, and I was wondering if there are any songs, albums of theirs that you like, and by extension, if you like some of the former members' solo music. Uh Helen has been a One Direction stand for a while, and there are album songs that she thinks still hold up, but Love. she doesn't begrudge others if they're if they're not their thing. Oh, that's very kind of her. Yeah, I would definitely begrudge someone if they're like, I don't like Mariah. I'd be like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, Helen is very diplomatic. That's sweet She's like her. me, you know. Me and Helen are like two peas from the same pod. Okay. <laughs> um, I never was a super One Direction stan, but I did think that on all of their albums, they had a couple of songs that were very good and yeah. I enjoyed. Um, I'm trying to look through. I have a best of One Direction playlist. Okay. But I haven't listened yeah, to. you're talking and saying that you weren't. You were never I looking. wasn't because I, but that was why I had to pull out the songs of theirs I cared about because I was like, oh, I like this song, but I don't want to listen to their albums. Um, songs that I remember really, really liking. Um, I liked I Would a lot. I need to re-listen to it because I can't even sing it back to you, but I remember liking I Would a lot. Mm -hmm. I liked Night Changes. I liked No Control. I liked Stockholm Syndrome. Best song ever, which was like a big cheesy song that people thought was annoying. I thought was really fun. <laughs> so I was into that. Um, of the older members or the former members, I feel like that Zayn song did very well, and I think that is good. Mm -hmm. um, I also really like Harry Styles' new single. I did not like his first album at all, and that first song he put out, which was like nine minutes of oh, noise. Oh, the nine minutes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That was nothing to me. But he has a new single out where um, he ended a new video where he also seems to be sweating on some guys as well as girls. I'm like, okay. are you? All, all the guys are getting the memo. They're I was going like, to say, hey, are, you on the the, are you on the queer spectrum? And if so, welcome. Like, you were, were welcomed happily. What is his song called? <laughs> uh, Lights Up. Lights Up is the song. And I think that song actually is very good. It has a really great bass line. I and haven't heard it. You should give it a listen. It's I, good. The, I feel like everything we're talking about today, I'm just like, haven't heard. <laughs> haven't heard. Sorry. Well, just give it a listen. It is That song, I think, is quite good. And uh, I'm excited for his second album, Era. I think it'll be more my speed, more my style, more my... Harry Styles. Wow. And I also like that um, Taylor doesn't seem to hate him as far as her ex-boyfriends go. No, he treated her well. Yes. So like Harry Styles, like, if he is bisexual and would like to date me, <laughs> then because it seems like he's a good boyfriend. I think you've nice called guy. him ugly via text. No, I just didn't. Uh, no, I think Harry Styles is very attractive. It's just that one picture that I was like, I don't like this picture that everyone is going nuts over. I thought it looked great. No. It was like one part of his Rolling Stone shoot. He looks great in that No, shoot. the hair was too greasy and, and the wispy. I, I like I, his wispy I little mustache. I can't do a wispy mustache. I, I like think there's it. nothing grosser than a wispy mustache. Wow. If you can grow facial hair and you want to grow it, if you can't, do not try. Please, for wow, the love of God. strong but feeling. Yeah, uh, Harry Styles is like obviously very attractive. It's just that one picture and I guess photo shoot. Is, yeah. Mm, I was not a fan of it. Right, do you have any feelings on One Direction or the former members at all? Um, I actually very much liked their music. Yeah. I, I can't say that I like, have listened to them. Mm -hmm. I have like gone out to uh, my way to listen to them. They right. were a little bit um, I guess younger, younger demographic. Yeah, they are. They were a little. Yeah, young they were. For us. They were a little young for us. So, um, which you know, young people put, do put out great stuff, but it just wasn't. I was never a boy band person. Like mm. I never loved a boy band. Mm. So you never uh, loved. You didn't love In Sync even. I, I liked and appreciated what Insync did, and I acknowledge that they had great songs. But like, I was never like into boy bands. Ever. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I, there really isn't a boy band that I was like, "Ooh, I love this boy band." I did like also um, Niall Horan. I don't know if that's how you say his name. I liked Slow Hands from him. I thought that was a good song. Okay. Yeah. Um. And but yeah, no, the, the songs that I have heard from One Direction, I've I've liked all of them. I think Story of My Life's really cute. Oh, it is a great song. That's <laughs> yeah. a great song. Yeah. No, I I think they put out some great stuff. Yeah. I don't know enough 
about their entire discography. That's fair. I guess you'll a, have to dive into the Best of One Direction playlist. There's I'll so, send the link. Please send the link. <laughs> I'll thing. send the no, link. I want to listen to the, the girl, the bisexual girl. First. Yeah, Kalani. She's, yeah. Uh, yes, listen to her first. She's great. She's yeah. great. Um, so I think now, unless there are more that you need to talk about, no, I, now I, I think I we're good. Say, yeah. All right, great. Well, now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the episode, or my favorite part of the episode, at least. It is the giving you moments, darling, where we talk about what has gotten us through this week, what has given us life, what has given us moments, and Matt Steele, what this week has given you moments. Bitch, you know my ass saw Parasite last night. <laughs> Don't spoil anything the movie about that it. that everyone is seeing. Don't say a about. word about the friggin' plot. That's all I ask. Do I, not say anything about it. I, the plot, the people are like, don't say what the plot, don't talk about what the plot is, don't talk about what the plot is. It's not like the plot is like super, I mean, the plot's like crazy and fun and cool, but like, just like a simple log line, like, isn't going to spoil anything. Well, I don't like, want it. You know, it's an, it's great. Like, it's really, really great. Yeah. I'm so excited about it because I, we really need a, a, a front runner for best picture. Mm. That's a foreign language film. We almost had it with Roma last right. year. I was really excited that Roma could have potentially won last year because we've never had a non English speaking movie win, win? Best picture. Yeah. Really? And so I think this would be an awesome opportunity. The fact that it comes from Korea. Um, Do you think it's your favorite film of the year so far? Um, I would say it's up there. I don't know if I prefer it to the farewell i oh, love you farewell. know i loved the farewell yes. so asia's really killing it lately guys All right like, uh lulu wang who's uh, did the farewell is great um at this movie parasite and last year a movie came out that i didn't see until this year called uh shoplifters which was mm. uh from japan i believe which i watched on the airplane flying to london to see the spice girls weeping on the airplane oh my the shoplifters was excellent so like Asia's really killing it as far as movies go yeah Love. No. but parasite it's just it was my kind of movie it was just taking you on there were so many tonal shifts <laughs> it would go from comedy to thriller to drama to like gory horror like it wow and you know i love a tonal shift in a movie just like a sudden slap you across the face this is what we're doing which happened in hereditary actually <laughs> speaking did of, you like that part of, of hereditary? I, I did like the fact that hereditary did it um there were other parts of hereditary that i was just like what's happening like <laughs> i don't get this but um but i love a sudden tonal shift All right and it just the funny parts are so funny and it's ridiculous it's campy but it's also creepy it's so much going through there's a giant you know i love a giant like rompy chase scene at the end that's very much my aesthetic i do do like it's that like a scary romp it's really fun all right it's so much fun everyone go see it I, I mean i'm gonna see it i believe this week sometime so i will let you know my feelings on it probably next week guys so i think i'll like it I, yeah. I have high hopes in a movie that is so in a in a year that is so dominated with like straight dudes yeah like this is a a fun different movie it's okay. like a movie the movie's filled with the movies this year are filled with just like straight dudes and then there's judy the farewell and parasite <laughs> <sighs> what does that mean i can't tell what you're saying there but it's fine like is it women focused you're saying no it's not it's just not so aggressively straight okay <laughs> like okay <laughs> i feel like so many movies that are coming out this year are so aggressively heterosexual which, yeah. is, which and is male and male which is you know wonderful the heterosexuals deserve the, to have a platform oh, they have had a platform <laughs> they don't deserve anything but yes but you know i feel like the movies this year are very like aggressive about it there's okay. so many of them yeah. this year so so you know parasite i feel like is something different all right oh and also the there's a guy in there who's like really hot all right i love that <laughs> i love a hot guy in a horror film yeah, exactly. <laughs> keeping me awake yeah and he's rich too which you know we rich love. in the movie or oh, he's rich in the movie yeah okay. <laughs> which you know we love a hot rich guy a rich guy that you know if everyone has a type ours it's hot and rich <laughs> <laughs> that's so silly um well as we all know my giving me moments <laughs> Kesha, Kesha, Kesha. I cannot explain to you how much I love Raising Hell. I think it is such a perfect pop song, such a perfect use of Big Frida. I love that she's actually gotten a featured credit on this song, unlike her features on Drake and Beyonce songs, where, she, you know, Big Frida's kind of just like going in the background and like doing a lot of like call outs, but no one's saying Big Frida's name. But also, I do, not to say a negative at the beginning, but one thing I wish is I wish Big Frida was in the video because it's like, mm -hmm. if she's going to be featured, let's, let's just make Big Frida a thing and stop just pulling her excitement and energy and just like using it for ourselves but whatever other than that 
the pot, the song is so great. And I am just, as we all probably can tell from my reactions to songs lately, I am so sick of how emo and down tempo and boring pop music is right now. Like yeah. it's so everything's mid tempo and sparse and electronic and emotional, but like just melodic enough that it'll get stuck in your head, but nothing really is. Ha- everyone's whispering everything. And I'm just like, kill me. <laughs> Give me something fun. Give me a joy. Give me a silly rap sung gospel moment. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> Truth yes, hurts yes. Fun. Truth hurts is fun. Truth yeah. hurts is fun, but it's also a little bit minor and a little bit like yes, there is a sort of like minor. Yes, it. yes, there's a little bit minor, and this is just like no, I'm a fucking pop song. I'm gonna pretend yes. it's 2013. It is so 2013. Yes. Which like looking back, damn, 2013 was a it was good a great time year. for music. Yes, and and then I, 2014 hit, and it was just like <laughs> I know, and I feel like we've been in the sludge of pop music for so incredibly long, and I want Kesha to lift us out of it. Raising hell is the, the perfect first step and I feel like that album trailer gives me a lot of hope. The album trailer, everything sounds great. And it, there seems to be like such a vision behind yes. it. Yes. That's, that's not so serious. Like it, the, the vision doesn't take itself too seriously. Oh no. Like it's not like oh I'm going to go back to my roots. And no. Blah, you know, which you know we love as well, but if it's done well. But this album feels like so much fun yes. while still having something behind it. Yes. And the video is Ridiculous. It's <laughs> so, so unbelievably much ridiculous. Fun. I love every moment of that song and that video. It is going to be on my playlist for the rest of the year. And I was trying to think. It's one of my favorite songs of the year. Like a top oh, definitely. three, yeah. maybe. Like I just love it so, so much because it's like that pop music is supposed to be joyful. It is supposed to make you feel happy and uplifted. And I feel like no one is doing that these days. And I want Kesha to do it. Encourage us to, you know, get high or get drunk and have parties and like do silly things and like just be happy because Kesha's a happy person. Obviously, she went through a lot of, and she talks about it. She's like, I had to put out that last album. I was going through serious things and I had to talk about some serious stuff but the life is supposed to be about having fun and being joyful and that's what my music is and it's mm-hmm. like thank you thank you for not conforming to the billy eilishes and the halsies <laughs> and it's like i just i love a great pop melody a great pop structure and she has it and she has it and she has it i just am so appreciative to her for making great pop music again because i just i've been i've been missing it i just have to I mean we, we probably can all tell by when we're reviewing things but i truly miss it yeah. um also, just to put sp- sp- talk on uh, the Selena Gomez ballad, I think is good. The yeah. lo- uh, love you or lose you to love me or whatever. I think it's very Julia Michaels. It's just like yes. this is a <laughs> Julia Michaels song, but about Selena Gomez's Justin Bieber situation. The other song I'm a little iffy about. Look at her it's, now. It's cute. I it's like cute, it. it's but fun. it's uh, it's it didn't. It's not as immediate for me as the the other one. But I'm excited that she's being so you know radically honest in her songs these days because it's like very clear what we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, and I just look forward to more music from her. I had, I had no idea that Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber dated for that. Isn't that crazy? Like to me, I it, it's such a blip. I d- I didn't even really acknowledge no, them as a couple they, until they like broke up. They were on and off for years, like maybe half a decade. Like they were together, then not together, then together again, and then That's not nuts. together, and then he got it with Haley Bieber. Be, uh, Baldwin, like right after they weren't together. To me, nothing that Justin Bieber does really registers. <laughs> like I, I, even when he was like younger than like yeah. a little kid, like I was always kind of like, oh yeah, he's a big thing. But like I don't, I always forget how big he right. was and right. how much of a name he like currently still is. Yeah. in a weird way. Like yeah. I, I really. That's just. Our lines are parallel and they never intersect. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like he also falls in the category of like a One Direction. It's like, you're too young for me to really invest in. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I do, I was telling you, I really think kids that age think of them like the way we thought of Justin, Justin and Brittany. I uh, see. We were talking about this last night. I don't think so. Uh, I, I think they do. I think they think they do, but I don't think people know how huge Justin and Brittany were. I agree with and that. And the reason is because back in 1999, 2000 or whatever, like all we had was Britney Spears. Yeah, no, we lived in a monoculture. We, we, it was you know? a, the biggest things on the planet were Britney Spears in sync, which was starring Justin Timberlake. And then there were subsects of like Christina and uh, and, <laughs> and Backstreet Boys, which were, you know, were just like a tiny little step down. But like, not, I wouldn't say Backstreet Boys was a step down. They were just as big. Not as a step down in quality, but I feel like more people were in sync. I feel like I think it was. I feel like more you, people were definitely Britney people, I but I like, think it was neck and neck. I truly, feel, I feel like if you, I feel like in sync would have won the popular vote. 
<laughs> I feel like if we pulled I America, mean, but around I Want It That Way, Millennium, when that album came of out, course, they Backstreet were gigantic. Were very big. They were bigger than... But I think... They were bigger in comparison to NSYNC than Christina was to Britain. I would I agree with yes. that. Yes, absolutely. But guys, that re- at that time, that was, that was really bad. like... That was it. And so the fact that the biggest, the most famous girl on the planet was dating the most famous guy on the planet. It's, it's now, there's just so much content nowadays. And even at that time when Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber were dating, there even then there was so much content. And there were so many famous people yeah. that like they could elude you. I mean, you know, I, I did not pay attention to Justin Bieber at all years ago. Tell us, Whereas email us. Not, not pay attention to Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. Email us if we are, if you think either way on this, because I could see it both ways. Part of me thinks that, I mean, it's the closest they'll get. To just I agree with you that. You know, yeah. like they, it's the closest it's going to get. Because now it's just there are there's so much content out yes. there. There's so many famous people out there, and they'll just both it's be so sad creating me. songs about each other till the end of time. You know, sure. it's just like Britney and her every time moments, and Justin's Crimea River. It's like, yeah, we're going to just be singing about each other for a while, and you know, making money off of it. So <laughs> there's good that. for them. <laughs> um, well, I guess I think that's it for today. Wow, I can't believe we wrapped this up in 53 minutes after like a week and a half. A but week and, uh, yeah, what was there to discuss? Um, well, thank you so much for listening and thank you for enjoying the Two Gay Mats podcast. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify and listen on YouTube if you'd like. Um, make sure to give us an uh, a review on Apple Podcasts, a five-star review. That really would help and we love, love, love. Um, go to our main channel at youtube.com slash Two Gay Mats for more uh, reactions and reviews and video content. If you like us a lot, you should go to patreon.com slash Two Gay Mats for as little as $1 a video. You'll get extra bonus videos from us every single week. We've been a little bad about that, but we just moved. We'll be back. We, we were moving. <laughs> yes. We um, were only bad about it for one week. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Two Gay Mats and at P- Matt Palmer Music for me. And that it's Matt Steele for me. And anything else you want to tell the people? Wish us luck, guys. There's still a lot more to be done. There's in the a lot to unpack. To make but it beautiful. But we're here. You'll see it in the video. Yes, it's yeah. coming. You might see some boxes in the background, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Don't judge. For, the, for the first video. Yeah, that's Not okay. for the first two. I would say we'd be done by then. Yeah, and I think there's a way to move the box. There are few enough boxes that we can move them out <laughs> of the shot. <laughs> no, we got to see show the people that we're real, that no, we're just slumming it. They know we're real. We're not slumming it. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back soon with another 2 Game Mats podcast. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.